It's now 23 minutes past eight. Why isn't the world getting warmer, or at least as quickly as most climate scientists expected? We're still chucking out carbon dioxide, but for some reason in recent years, it's not been reflected in higher temperatures. The UK Met Office has revised down its forecasts, and although it says the long-term trend is still for warming, the global average temperature will have stayed roughly the same for two decades. Professor James Hansen is adjunct professor at Columbia University Earth Institute. He's also uh, outgoing director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. He just recently announced his retirement and he's here with us in the studio. Good morning, Professor Hansen. Hi, good morning. How do you explain what's going on with temperatures? Well, I should correct what you just said. It's not true that the temperature has not changed in two decades. In the last decade, it's warmed only about a tenth of a degree as compared to two tenths of a degree in the preceding decade. But that's just natural variability. There's no reason to be surprised by that at all. But there was a suggestion that we should have been expecting 0.2 of a degree and it, see, and it has... No, if you look over a 30 or 40 year period, then the expected warming is about two tenths of a degree per decade. But that doesn't mean that each decade is going to warm two tenths of a degree. There's too much natural variability. And there are other forcing factors. It's not only CO2 that's change, changing. The sun's brightness changed, uh, decreased slightly over the last 10 years, about a tenth of a watt per meter squared. That's uh, not as large as the climate forcing that you get from increasing CO2, but it's not negligible. In addition, China and India have been pumping out aerosols by burning more and more coal. So you get from that not only CO2, but also these particles that reflect sunlight and reduce the heating of the earth. So there's nothing, it's a complicated system, but there's no change at all in our understanding of climate sensitivity and where the climate is headed. So the UK Met Office revising down its forecast for temperatures, are they wrong or are we misreading what they're doing and this is a temporary adjustment and and it'll be revised up again? Uh, our understanding of how sensitive the climate system is is based on the Earth's history, not on climate models. We have good data on how the Earth responded in the past when carbon dioxide changed and other forcing factors changed. So there's no reason to change any forecast for the long term. So the Met Office is wrong? Well, if you want to look at the next decade or two, then you should take account of the fact that the last decade only warmed one-tenth of a degree rather than two-tenths of a degree. So in that sense, of course, they're using the empirical information of what mm. the starting point is today. But, but, but you, are you, I mean, I take your point. You're looking back at the way you say we know how the Earth responds, but there are a lot, an awful lot of things we do not know. And one of the suggestions, in fact, our correspondent Roger Harabin was making his report an hour ago, is, is that actually what the oceans are doing. That There are various suggestions. One suggestion is actually Sure. The, the whole world is responding, it's absorbing, it's adapting, yeah. Yeah. And, and therefore the consequences of our action or the warming will not be what we thought. The other is that there's this possible no, delay no, because the oceans all. You are... You see, when we look at the Earth's history, we get the event, we understand what the eventual response will be. Now, how it tracks over a period of time, a decade or a few decades, does depend upon how fast the ocean is taking up heat, for example. But these are really details, and th- this is a diversionary tactic. It, our understanding of global warming and human-made climate change has not been affected at all. You know, I didn't come to Europe to talk about details which are very technical So the details. fact that the last decade no, is point one no, is it's I, neither here nor there in the long, great scheme of things. Well, you know, do you know that Canada is in the process of trying to Get Europe to agree that tar sands are no different than conventional oil, even though they put much more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And they're hoping to twist the arm of the United Kingdom, France, and other European countries and get them to agree to pretend that tar sands are no more damaging. If we don't wake up to that, if you don't wake up to that, then we're going to put our children in a position where they have climate change ongoing that's out of their control. Can I just ask you, can you understand why people listening, outsiders, non-specialists, hear both sides of the debate and feel that they may be over-egging it for their own reasons? Uh, Well, I understand why. It's because the 
deniers want the public to be confused. They raise these minor issues which are uh, something between uh, experts and and then we forget about what is the main story. The main story is carbon dioxide is going up, it's going to produce a climate which is going to have dramatic changes if we don't begin to reduce our emissions. And we can't introduce into this problem the dirtiest fuels on the planet. Professor James Hansen, thank you very much. Thank you.